In this video we're looking at enthalpy changes and Hess's law. So in green there, just have a look at that, there's more than one way to make carbon dioxide gas from carbon solid and O2 gas. So we'll start with the method that we're probably most familiar with and that's the reaction between one mole of carbon solid and one mole of O2 gas making one mole of CO2 gas and the enthalpy change for that reaction is minus 394 kilojoules per mole. The other way is shown in brown so that's a two-step process so we start with one mole of carbon solid and that's going to react with half a mole of O2 gas and that's going to make one mole of carbon monoxide gas and then the second step of that process would be to take the one mole of carbon monoxide gas and then react that with half a mole of O2 gas and make the carbon dioxide gas. So you can see both methods start with the same substances so we have the orange root carbon with O2 carbon with O2 in the brown root and they both make carbon dioxide so there's the carbon dioxide there. Now I deliberately haven't put the enthalpy changes up for the two brown steps. So as I do that, what I want you to think about is how do they compare with the orange root? And that's going to take us into Hess's law. So there's the first one up there. So the first part of the brown root, the enthalpy change for that reaction is minus 111 kilojoules per mole. So you might want to be thinking now what the other one could be and I'm going to put it on the board. Were you right then? Were you? So the enthalpy change for the second part of the brown root is minus 283 kilojoules per mole. So hopefully you can see that this orange enthalpy change is equal to the sum of the brown enthalpy changes. And the important thing to remember is both of these roots start and finish at the same point. So if we look at the enthalpy profile diagram for the orange root, you can see we have the reactants higher in enthalpy than the product. And the enthalpy change, remember, is the the difference between the enthalpy of the reactants and the products. So there's our enthalpy change for the orange root of minus 394 kilojoules per mole. And now I've put on the two-step process, so the brown root. So we've got this initial step in the brown root where we go from carbon and oxygen to carbon monoxide. And that had an enthalpy change, if you remember, of minus 111 kilojoules per mole. And then we went from the carbon monoxide to the carbon dioxide and the enthalpy change was minus 283. So you can see that the gap between the starting point and the products is the same. So the single root, minus 394, the brown root, the two-step root, it's obviously minus 111 plus minus 283, which is obviously going to give us minus 394. So this brings us nicely to Hess's law, which I've written up for you on the board there. So Hess's law states that when there is more than one route possible, and the initial and final substances are the same, the overall enthalpy change is the same. So let's just apply that here. We've got two routes, an orange route and a brown route. The initial substances are carbon and oxygen for both routes. The final substance is carbon dioxide for both routes. So therefore, it doesn't matter which way you go, orange or brown, the overall enthalpy change is obviously the same. And that's because you're starting and finishing at the same points on both routes. And another way you can represent this concept is by drawing what's called a Hess's Law cycle. So we've got our two routes shown. So you can see across the top in orange we've got route 1 
and we know that the enthalpy change for that is minus 394. And then going down and then back up the other side, we've got root 2. So that's the route through carbon monoxide. And you can see that the Hess's law underneath there, that minus 394 equals minus 111 plus minus 283. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use Hess's law cycles to calculate an unknown value in the cycle. So imagine we didn't know that that was 111. So we'll just say that that's x. So if we know two of the values in the cycle, and there's one that we don't know, then we can rearrange and solve for x. So essentially that's what we're going to do now.